I'm Amos Steve Houston, and welcome to my channel. On this channel, as you know, we talk about all things financial services, but more specifically, mortgage section and final expense. And that industry, what a great industry it is. We talk about the facts, we provide documentation, and we let you to decide what's best for you. So welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to talk about making sure that whatever IMO you sign up for has two paths of success, not just one. I've actually shot this video a couple of times. I think this video is one of the most critical items that you cannot overlook when you're considering signing with an IMO. This is one thing you want to watch out for. Now, one's a network marketing plan type of IMO. Many IMOs only give you that one path, which is you have to recruit in order to advance up the contract rate. Others give you two passes of success where you go out there and produce, control your own destiny when it comes to your contract rate by going out there and producing. And if you want to build, you can do that too, which is why we call it two paths of success. We're going to get really down dirty on the numbers. I hope this makes sense so you become educated and you can make the right decision. Remember, we discuss the facts, we provide third-party documentation, and we allow you to decide. Also, special shout out to a couple in Texas, Nancy and Scott, had the opportunity to talk to them this afternoon. What a great couple. Look forward to working with them out in the state of Texas. So let's go ahead and get started and dive into these numbers. Let's go. I have actually shot this video several times. <laughs> I did it live stream about a week or so ago, and I didn't realize that you had to, we do live stream on YouTube, you had to kind of reverse it, otherwise it looks like you're shooting in a mirror. Everything was backwards. The information got out, which is great, but it was somewhat uh, uh, poor quality video, and then of course it was backwards. Uh, but then I shot it again, and the more I think about it, this you know this has got to be the, one of the most critical uh, things that you want to make sure you have in an IMO. Um, and again, it comes down to what you're looking for, right? Uh, some people want um, the more the network marketing type model; others don't. Uh, now. Um, I will say that everybody says, compares network marketing to, to, uh, uh, to MLM, which is a multi-level marketing comp plan, and those comparisons couldn't be farther from the truth. Network marketing is recruit, recruit, recruit. Don't get those things out of, out of order. That's your number one responsibility, even more, more than actually producing, and that's how you build your, your team, your agency, whatever it is. And look, I don't have any problem at all with network marketing. I've been in network marketing myself before, but this is a serious business to me. Um, and uh, if you want to be a builder, then certainly we'd love to have you on our team as well. But uh, I don't believe in income cap, and I don't believe in requiring someone to recruit or build if they only want to be a great producer. There's time for everything. The old saying that the T in timing is more important than T in talent is very true. There, the timing is important for everybody, and I believe that if you're going to build an agency, you should do that, and you, you should want to do that. There's a lot of good reasons why you should. However, I believe a real uh, leader, coach, and mentor in this business leads from the front and knows how to do this business first and knows how to put their name on an application first and has an IMO or an agency or both behind them that will actually train your agents for you. Now, I know many of you are thinking this cap I have on today is the Chicago Cubs, and that's one of Angela's favorite teams. Uh, I have it on there for coach because today I'm going to coach you kind of what to look for in these IMOs and ask for their promotion guidelines. So you can see that uh, that you have no restrictions and no income caps uh, on your income, right? This is your typical, what I would call network marketing. I love to draw these circles because once you see this, you know the old napkin presentation, if you know anything about network marketing, right? You plus, plus them, you know, et cetera. But we're gonna call this the network marketing Path. Okay, so what happens is, is that you come in and usually at 60%, actually some of them are lower than that. I've seen 30, 40%, I've seen 30 and 40% where you get to split it with your manager, all that kind of garbage, right? But, you know, so let's just assume that 60% is one of the most popular out there and it goes down from there, right? Uh, in these network marketing, all recruit, no, uh, no, no money type of organizations. You typically come in at 60% as a new agent and you get promoted based on your Production, right? And all this production is based on issue paid. 
meaning it's not what you write, it's what you actually get paid on, right? So we write the business, we submit it, it goes to the underwriters, and then when they issue the policy and pay you a commission, it's considered issue paid, and that's what you get promoted on, not your written. Most IMOs uh, are promoting you based on what you, you, what you actually earn, what you actually get issued, because there's a lot of stuff that goes on where things don't get issued at all, so it's kind of funny money, right? Uh, you go to the next level, 70%, it's $10,000 issue paid premium, APV. Now, I have a video out there that explains to you what APV means if you don't know what it means, but basically, in short, it means annualized premium volume. So the average policy in this industry is about $85 a month to the policyholder, which multiplied over 12 months is about $1,080. That's APV, annualized premium volume or value, right? And on that, you take your contract rate and you can figure out what your commission is, right? Plus, they hold back about 25% to protect you from chargebacks. But uh, that kind of gives you a real quick synopsis. Um, but go back. I have a series out there that talks about goal setting. It really goes through that in detail. Uh, but again, 70%, 10,000 issue paid APV per month for two consecutive months. Actually, I'm sorry. Most of these companies are now going, have gone to three consecutive months. Why? To keep the promotions down. And that way, they can keep the money flowing to the, to the upline uh, by slowing down your rate of promotion, right? So 75% equals $15,000 a month issue paid, 80% $25,000 issue paid. Now, going back to what I was saying, this is a, you know, this, this can, up until this point right here, you can, you can do this all on your own in most IMOs, right? So about right here, uh, that changes. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the average APV on, in, in the industry, it's about $1,080. You can see that's about 25 applications a month, which, you know, on a full-time basis and some really good part-timers, depends on what you call part-time, right? Two or three days out in the field, you know, 20 hours, 25 hours um, is what I would consider part-time. You can easily set 10 appointments during that time. Uh, and if you set 10 appointments, you'll see six to eight. You'll write three to five applications a week. It's about three to $5,000 APB a week. That's 20000 a month. You're right there, right? Issue paid. Again, if you're writing 20000 you're not going to get them all issue paid. You can figure about 60, 70% of it, which you write, and we're far above that here on our agency, but we do things a little bit different. And I don't have time to get into that right now, but if you take, you know, 60% average issue paid, you're going to be doing good. You should be getting around 80%, right? But so if you take $20,000 written and you take, uh, 70% of that, you're going to get pay, issue paid about fifteen to 17000 which puts you to 75% contract rate, right? 80%, 25000 issue paid, APV, about 25 applications a month. Now it changes. This is where the income cap comes in, not gap. I keep saying gap. At this point right here, things start to change, right? The reason why I put a red box around this is now the game has changed, right? From here, you controlled your own destiny. You go out there, you get yourself some leads, you book some appointments, you go run those appointments, you go write some apps. Now, that's changed. No matter how much production you do a month as maybe a top producer, again, over 25 apps a month, game has changed. Right? No, now you no longer can advance yourself. You're no longer in control of your destiny. Your income has been capped. Because now, in order to get to 85%, you have to be doing $50,000 with issue paid business. And you have to have seven, what they call unique writers, meaning you have to have seven people on your team in your agency contributing to that $50,000 a month for three consecutive months, okay? Three consecutive months. These are, these are all threes. Now, again, can you control those seven people's activity? No. How many people do you have to recruit or hire to get seven people actually going to go do something? Probably 50 to 100. To get seven. So basically, <laughs> your income is capped forever until you can get seven people that will contribute this amount of APV issue paid every month for three consecutive months, right? Even if you're going out there and you're writing a tremendous amount of business yourself, it doesn't matter. Unless you have a team, your income has been capped. The reason why it's designed that way is very simple. It end up, ends up pushing, you know, between your contract rate and your upline's contract rate, this all these percentages in the middle, if they can keep you pushed down, that AP, that the difference between the, the 180% there is 20%. Right? So that 20% income on every app you write ends up getting pushed up to the upline. That's the idea. Keep you down longer, right? 
and push the money up line because it's more of a network marketing plan. So now let's take this out a little further. 90%, $75,000 issue paid, and you're gonna need something more like 11 or 12 uh, unique riders. 11 or 12 agents on your team that you have recruited or hired that actually are doing something, right? So you might look at maybe 100 to 120 people to get 11 of them to actually go out there and do something. And the next one is more like about 15 to 18 depending on the, what the IMO, okay? The next one is more like um, uh, 23 to 25, meaning you're gonna have to recruit somewhere between 200 to 250. You might as well figure it's a 10% rule, because that's about right. And then down here, you're looking at more like um, 50, 50, 50 to 53. To get more to the 110% contract rate, right? So now you're recruiting Five, six hundred people to go out there and do that volume in order for you to get paid what you're worth because no matter how much business you're personally doing, you're never going to be able to get to the 110% contract rate unless you have hired four or five hundred people and you have 50 that are contributing to that business every single month for three months. And if you miss one month out of three, you, the clock starts over again, right? So this is a typical comp plan out there with many of these network marketing type IMOs. And if I were you, I'd run because you don't have to settle for that. You don't have to settle for an income cap. You should have what we call two paths of success. And that's what this video is about today. So let's talk about the two paths of success. So here's path number, number one, okay? Let's compare the two. Okay? So... With a good IMO, you should start out at least 70%. I'm going to use my red pen. Hang on. So it stands out more in the video. You should start out at minimum 70%. Now, we're talking about an IMO with a leads-based sales opportunity. It's easy to have a higher contract rate with no leads and be starving to death. So having a leads-based sales opportunity that allows you to get to a higher contract rate is what, to me, makes more sense. You guys decide for yourself. But 75% of issue paid, $7,500, same thing applies here, issue paid volume, right? Issue paid APV for two consecutive months is a fair deal. Not three, okay? 10,000 gets you to 80% issue paid. I don't need to write this down every time. It, everything's gonna apply all the way up. Two months, okay? $10,000 issue paid. Now let's compare, okay? With this type of an IMO comp plan, it's not network marketing. Now, of course, they're going to let you recruit and build an agency if you want to, but you don't have to in order to get paid what you're worth. That's the whole idea of this video. But look at this. All I have to do as an as agent is go out and write 10 apps a month, and I'm going to be promoted to the 80% contract rate. No team, no recruiting, nothing. Or if I decide to build an agency for myself, and you should consider doing that, and they're not doing anything, and I can't get them off the couch. I can't afford to spend too much time kicking them out of the couch. So in comparison, you have 80% contract rate promotion. If you're doing $10,000 a month, issue paid APV for two consecutive months. And let's take a look at the next level here. 85%. Now remember, at 80% you are locked out. You're done. You can't advance up to the highest contract rate without building, without recruiting, and those people actually had to do something, right? Okay, but let's compare this. Let's, I want to focus on the volume. I can go out as an individual and do 12 apps a month, 13 apps a month, and write $12,500 worth of business. That's about 12 to 15 apps, right? Depending on your placement rate, let's just say 12 to 15 applications. Myself, I can control my activity. I can't control someone else's activity. Do we agree on that? I mean, if you ever dealt with people before, once you're building an agency, you've left the insurance industry, and then you're now in the people industry, and that's an entirely different game. They don't work for you. They don't work for me. They're agents. We lock arms. We're in partnership, right? But if they don't want to get out of, off the couch and get out of bed, there's not a whole lot I can do for it. And success is different for everybody. I never want to have my ideas of success placed on a new agent. If they're happy at 500 a week, if they're happy at $1,000 a week, I am happy to help them get to that point, right? Well, over here, you gotta be, you got to be pushing people. you got to be whipping the horses because you, you need, your income is capped until you get them to do something. When you have an IMO that gives you two paths, 
then you're in the right place, right? We encourage people, we motivate people, and we build great relationships. That's what builds our organization, not by whipping the horses. Because again, at the end of the day, they came here to be independent and to be in control of their own business, not for a boss, right? I hope we agree on that. Because if we don't agree on that, then I don't know why you're looking at this business. Because you need a job and you want a boss, this is probably not for you. Because here, you're running your own business. Right, with the help of a mentor and a coach. Remember, see if a coach. <laughs> All right, so 90% contract promotion is $15,000 of issue paid. All, everything applies, two months, versus 90% over here is going to take $75,000. Look at the difference 15 my, on my own, or 75 with a team of 11 people minimum. Okay, contributing to the business. Big difference. 95%, I can get the 95% contract rate if I do 17,500. So I missed the number here, 95% should be in here. Okay, $100,000 APP issue pay with 11, so 75,000 would be seven unique riders. Okay, so anyway, close enough. But 95% here, 17,500, over here 95% equals $100,000 with an agency doing and it has 11 unique riders participating in that business. Over here, I can do it. I can control my own activity for 17500 Again, 100% contract, 20000 105% contract, 25000 110%, 30000 That's 30 applications a month. Now, you may think that's not doable for you, but there's a lot of people that are doing that. I can tell you that right now. I had the, I had the data, right? And uh, we have many of them doing that right now in our IMO. So um, that it's on their own, without any team. In fact, there's a lot of people doing much higher than that on their own. That may not be you, but you should want the opportunity uh, to be promoted based on your production because over time, if you stay in this industry, you will get much better and these numbers will become more realistic. Certainly, writing 15 apps a month is very realistic. And I would even say writing 20 apps is very realistic. So you have 20 apps. A month on the average of thousand dollars a piece, you're going to be between, between ninety five and one hundred percent contract. How much more realistic is doing this plan? If that's all you ever did was get to not get to the hundred percent contract rate by going out and writing twenty twenty five apps a month, how realistic is that to you then to get it, to get there with this plan, where you have to do one hundred fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars with the issue paid business per month? and have a team of 10 to 20 people on your team, in your agency, doing it with you, right? I mean, it's a pretty simple answer. I mean, this is a much more realistic plan for most people, right? Okay? If you do this plan over here, you can be very busy recruiting and not very busy out there doing production. And I believe, again, like I said earlier in the video, in order to, to build an agency in this industry, you had to be willing to leave from the front. You had to be willing to go out there, suit up every day, put your uniform on, go out there and fight right along with your other agents, and, uh, and, and put your name on an application. Let's look at the at, at the uh, path number two. So this is your no income cap path one. This path I'd run away from. Okay, let's transition to path number two. This is what this whole video is about. You want to have path one. You don't want this plan. You want to have path one where I can go from seventy percent to one hundred and ten percent on my own pen, running my own business. No recruiting. No team. No agents. Now, not recommending that. I'm, that you don't build an agency, I'm simply saying that your income should not be capped if you're not ready to or if you have and those agents aren't doing anything. Because remember, uh, once we get into building an agency, we've now left the insurance business, we've now joined the people business. And as a builder in a people business, our job is to encourage, it is to motivate, and it is to build a great relationship and help them achieve whatever goals they're looking to achieve. If that's 500 a week, great. If it's 5,000 a week, fantastic. Whatever level they're, they believe they're, whatever level of success they're looking for, that's our job to help them achieve that success. Over here, you cannot do that very well because you're going to have to start really whipping your horses to get them to meet these production requirements. Otherwise, when you write an application, you're losing upwards to 20 or 30 percent commission that you could otherwise have because they're not doing anything. It builds resentment and you start focusing really, really hard on trying to get your horse, you know, beating your horses over here to produce and they're not and it builds resentment both from them and from the builder 
to get them to hit these production requirements so you can go out there and get promoted. And my business philosophy of building in any kind of a volunteer army is that I should never ask my people to do something so I benefit, right? It's all about we both benefit. It's a partnership. It's not you working for me. It's I'm working for you. And together, locking arms 100%, we can achieve the dreams that we set out to achieve both for both of us. If I help you, that helps me. All ships rise at a tide. That's my business philosophy. So over here, beating on people and asking them to go out there and, and work really, really hard so I get promoted is not something that I can I can gel with in my mind or even to win a contest, right? I never ask my people, my agents to do something for me. I want to find out what their goals are, what their dreams are, and I want to give everything I can, 100% of, of my efforts, to help them achieve those goals. That's why this comp plan, it's my book, is out. That's why it's over here at a network marketing call. Over here, I can control my own destiny. I can control my activity that gets the results that I'm looking for. I cannot control other people's activity, right? I can only encourage them, help them, and motivate them and pro provide the resources necessary for them to win. If they choose not to take advantage of that, there's not much I can do about that, right? I I'm not going to get out the whip and start whipping the horses. It's not, it goes against my grain. Path number two. So builder's plan, path number two. Let's talk about it. I come in the same thing over here because this IMO is giving me two paths of success. I can choose whichever one I want to go on or I can do both, right? So I'm going to start out at 70% as a brand new agent. I'm going to let her start producing. I'm going to learn and I'm going to start doing, right? In order to get promoted to 75%, I need to go out there and do $8,000 worth of business and I need to have three people on my team. Same thing, unique writers, issue paid. All that applies. The difference here is is that you had to maintain this again for two months, not the three months over here. Okay? So I get promoted to 80%. If I'm doing $12,000 a month as a team, again, that's six unique writers. I count, which means I only really need five. Okay? Next step, 85% promotion is 16,000 with nine unique writers, means I need eight in addition to myself. Next one, I get promoted to 90%. With $25,000, 12 unique writers, that means 11 plus me. Next one, 95%, $50,000 with issue paid APV business. That means 15 writers. That means 14, whoops, 14 unique writers plus me. Now, 100% contract, 75,000, 25 unique writers means I need 24 plus me, right? 105%, $100,000 worth of issue paid business per month. 30 unique riders, that means I need 29 people plus me. Next promotion, 110%. I'm doing $150,000 a month with uh, issue paid again, and I have one manager on my team, okay, right, uh, plus myself. Now, 115%, $250,000 and three managers. 120%, $350,000 and five managers. I can go all the way up to 120% contract rate, and I can do it with my own personal production and my team with my agents, right? Same thing, okay? Now, a manager usually is 15 agents doing $50,000 a month in business, okay? Qualifies you in this category. So you need to go out, one of your unique writers here needs to also become a builder, and they'll go out and they'll, and they'll start building an agency, and once they hit 15 agents, doing $50,000 a month, 14 plus them, they're considered a manager, and now you have $150,000 of volume running through your business, and you have one manager on your team, and you're at the 110%, right? So let's take a look at the 105%. This is the farthest I can go before I need to cr duplicate myself, essentially, in my business and create a manager outside myself, right? So, and I can control all this activity to a certain extent by my recruiting efforts, right? But again, it's largely out of your control because you can't motivate people to do something they don't want to do, right? But let's just take a look at this. 105%, $100,000 of issue paid APV, and 30 unique writers, 29 plus myself. Let's look at the network marketing comp plan. To get to 105%, I need to do $225,000 worth of issue paid, more than double, and I need to have 23 to 25 unique writers, right? So maybe a little bit less requirement on the unique writers, right? But more than twice the premium, right? So those are your. This is your two paths of success. That one is not for me. If it's for you, that's fantastic. 
But remember, on top of all this, what you're looking for in your IMO is a bonus program. You should get bonus on your personal production as well as your team if you're building an agency. And there should be an equity option. There should be an ownership option. I believe that's how you how an IMO should grow zero. I believe that's how an IMO grows. Stop. I believe that's how a quality IMO grows their business by rewarding their leadership. So you might ask yourself, why did I spend so much time on this? Because, again, I, I think I've said it enough times, is that I can control my destiny here. I can control my activity that gets the results. All I need to do is I need to learn a couple of things. I need to give me some leads. I need to learn a phone script and get very good at booking appointments. Then I'm going to qualify those folks on a product. I'm going to go out there and make a presentation. I'm going to write some apps. And then it's rinse and repeat. Just three or four things. And I would argue that the most important part of those steps is getting really, really good at getting leads, knowing what leads to buy, the quality of the leads, you know, the right leads at the right price, that type of thing. But get good at the phone script, get good at handling rejections and booking appointments. And once you do that, because nothing happens until you have an appointment, right? If you get really good at booking appointments, then the in-home presentation will fall in place. It's really about like, know, and trust and getting good with building relationships with people. But now, once you get good at just a couple of skills, you can go all the way up to 110% contract. So for those of you who have 100% contract but have no leads, what good is it? You can come into an IMO that has a high-quality lead program with technology platform to back it up so that the leads are not duplicated, repurposed, or recycled, right? Uh, and then get to 110% contract by being able to scale your income by the same thing I just said a minute ago. You want to go from 5000 a week to 10000 a week, what does it take? It takes work, right? Once you learn a few skills, it's I need to get more leads, talk to more people, book more appointments, go see more people face-to-face, -face, sneak at sneak at their house, and write more applications, right? So scaling your income is very simple, right? And that's why you want to have two paths, because I'm while I'm pedaling this bicycle, right, and moving up and getting myself to 110% contract, I can also be building over here, but my income is not capped while I'm waiting for these results to appear. While I'm waiting to hire some people or recruit some people that will actually duplicate my efforts and go out there and put their name on an application. Because again, I've already said many times, and I've been doing this for a long, long time, about building, building teams for 30 years. This part of it is you can control your activity only in the fact that you're continually talking to good people, and hiring good people. But they have to go do the work, right? So while I'm finding the right people over here, I can move up the comp plan over here with my own activity. Why is that important? Well, because if you're going to build an agency, it's all about one thing. It's called spread. Because when you're building an agency, you're not taking money out of your agent's pocket. A lot of people think that, right? You've earned your contract rate because everybody comes in at the same rate, right? Just because if I'm at, if I'm at the 100% contract rate, I bring you in at 70%. I've earned that by my own personal production. The way we make money as, as builders is like they do in State Farm, New York Life, all these insurance companies uh, work on the same spread, right? If they're at 100% and they bring you in at 70%, there's a 30% spread paid to them by the carriers. You're not making any less because they're getting paid 30%. They're getting paid 30% because they've earned it by their production. So this 30% is what we call spread. And that's really how you make money in the insurance business by building an agency. And that's what we call leveraged-based income, right? There is residual income on the product, but once you start building a leveraged-based income, now you can scale your income even more by the more agents you bring on and you coach and mentor successfully to success, right? to make sure they're achieving success. So again, there's effort, there's money, there's time put into those agents, uh, and there's a reward paid to them by the insurance companies based on their contract rate and yours. And you had the same opportunity as they did by going up the comp plan, by this path, this path, but I would suggest that you do both paths. But again, don't take the one over here that has an income cap. There's no point in doing that, right? Control your destiny by your own production and build. Hope that helped. I know it's pretty exhaustive uh, explanation, but that's what I do. I want you to have all the information, and I hear from you all the time saying, hey, I really like the fact that you just lay it on the line and you talk uh, 
the, uh, the facts and the truth and uh, uh, rather bold. And I'm not here to try to offend anybody. If you're on this plan here uh, and it's working for you, fantastic. I'm not trying to talk you out of anything. All I'm saying is, is that the better option is to have two paths of success because you can control this path while you're doing this path, right? And combine them together to your best success, right? All right, so have a great day. Appreciate you being part of this channel. Again, if you would do me a favor, uh, do four things. <laughs> I know it's a lot to ask. But hit the bell below. You'll get instant notifications of any videos that I do on live stream. Hit the subscribe button, and you'll get uh, uh, emailed when a new video is, is, is put up on the channel. If you would, go down there and, and make a comment, if you would. I'd love to hear the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I possibly can. I'm in production, too, because I believe that you know anybody in this business is, that's uh, you know, building an agency, they need to be out there leading from the front, like I said earlier, by putting their name on an application. So I'm out a couple days a week doing that myself. And then don't forget to please like the video. It helps uh, helps others make a quality decision uh, up front so they don't have to worry about trying to make a change later. Now, so in closing, a couple of videos I recommend you watch is uh, Know Before You Go on my YouTube channel. That goes over 11 things or so that you should know or should ask your recruiter before you sign the uh, contracting paperwork. And the other one is Toilet Paper and Mortgage Session Leads. I think you'll find that one uh, humorous, and uh, also we'll go over the number one objection I hear all the time is, yeah, but their leads are more expensive. Right, but you're giving up 20% of your income for life. Appreciate it again. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.